Hello, this is Pastor David. Thank you for tuning in to today's message today. God has a divine word sent from heaven just for you. If you can just take the time, sit down, and just listen to it. And if you can hear this word, it can make a difference in your life. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I'll put my own outside up for that. <laughs> my God. Yeah. So, but what happened? She couldn't wait on God. She knew what she wanted, what she wanted. So she said, I'm going to make it happen. So she had her own plan. You, you go into my slave and you have a baby through her. <laughs> See, y- 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 y'all hear that? She couldn't wait on God. So she stopped trusting God. So now when you stop trusting to God, the devil have your mind messed up with alternative plans. He have your mind messed up and you start realizing, guess what? There's, you hear God say, you know that ain't it. But your mind be still saying, but that's all right. But that's all right. But who are you saying that's all right to? God. Who, who are you saying? But, 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 but they, they care about me. Don't you know you just got him in your life for your temporary fix, attention fix, while you really looking for the other one? Oh my God. What does she do? Uh uh. Go. You go have a baby with her. And that's how God is going to give me. My child. No, that's not what God promised. See what happened when you start mistrusting God. You start believing some crazy stuff. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? See what the lack of trust will have you do. She had to trust in her plan now. Nobody want to hear that. So what happened? For real? (laughs) Whose plan was it? Be careful what you ask for when you're in your feelings. Because you got to be real. You better be ready to deal with the reality of it when reality show up. You better deal with the reality of your choice. Later on. Read. And who did what? <laughs> Thank you. He said Hagar gave Hagar to be his wife. Wait a minute. How Hagar going to give Hagar? She was so mad. She was so messed up with this. She couldn't see the damage of what she about to do. Because she was blinded by what she wanted. She was my slave at first, but now she's his other wife. Watch, read. So he went into Hagar and she conceived. That wouldn't God. Go ahead. Anyway, (laughs) go ahead. She started hating her. No. Uh, 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 see, the devil didn't let you see the consequences of that mindset, that plan. No, you didn't get it. Sarah didn't despise her. Hagar was despising Sarah. I'm more woman than you ever could be. 
see, hello, oh, you just gave. Let me tell you something, ladies. Don't you ever let somebody make you doubt who you are. Know who you are. First, why? He, he could have married her, but he married you. So that must be something he see in you that you don't see in you. And guess what? And he is staying with you. He didn't pass by, hit it, and then quit it. And uh, He didn't do that. They, they sticking around. But here you are letting the devil make you doubt yourself by what you don't have. And what somebody else have, what they have and what you don't have has nothing to do with who you are. <laughs> Look at touch somebody and say, I got more than I know. I better leave y'all alone. <laughs> Is anybody starting to get any help? Is anybody starting to see anything that you can say, God, I see how, how these things have been working against me. How these things, how the devil have been working. Watch, you ain't heard nothing yet. Your head going to do this, watch. Some people, please don't. I, was, <laughs> let me see. And look what it says. Then Sarah said to Abraham, Go back to four. She conceived and when she saw that she had conceived her, what? Amplify full. And he had intercourse with Hagar. And she became pregnant. And when she saw that she was with child, uh -huh. she looked with contempt at her what? Upon her mistress. Ooh. And despised her. And he started despising her. Yes, your plan has backfired. Because look what the fifth verse said. Mike. Then Sarah said to Abraham. Uh, again. My, ball, my who? Uh -huh. My bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> look at somebody say, my bad. bad. Uh-huh. She blamed Abraham. <laughs> Read. Amplify. Then Sarai said to Abraham, May the responsibility for my wrong be upon you. And deprivation of rights be upon you. See, that's a blinded person who do stuff and they still can't see and they want to be mad and blame everybody else. See, but what you better begin to understand. Guess what? Uh huh. You're the one that the devil began to good what to make you flee. You're the one. The devil talked you out of staying. You're the one. Staying and trusting God. You're the one the devil made give up the promise. You're the one with the plan that you talked me into. And all of a sudden, you're gonna blame me. You don't see your part you played in this. Then Sarai said to Abram, May the responsibility for my wrong and deprivation of right be upon you. I gave my maid into your bosom, and when she saw that she was with child, I was contemptible and despised in her eyes. Stop. They blaming him why another woman can't stand you. No, read it again. Please, listen. If it's not in the Bible, please. If it's not in the Bible, then Pastor David up here lying, trying to throw off on somebody, and he's up here and he needs to sit himself down in the name of Jesus. 
Let's see what the Bible says. Read it again. Uh huh. Uh huh. May the responsibility for my wrongs be upon and deprivation of rights be upon you. Uh huh. I gave my maid into your bosom. Okay, watch. And when she saw uh -huh. that she was with child, what? I was contemptible and despised in her eyes. You made her hate me. Here you are, Shane. You got that woman hating me. You. She hated me because of you. She don't want to get along with me because of you. Wait, no. That's baby mama drama. Is it in there? Say the devil won't have you thinking that. But guess what? I ain't nothing new under the sun. He been doing that for 3,000 years. That same strategy. Reason why he used it is because it works. I'm telling you, no. I'm trying to tell you. When, see, see, God had to free me from something. And God had to take me in the word and say, no, that ain't you. That ain't nothing new. That ain't even all you only. That's the word. That ain't something new. Now who you gonna listen to? The word or what you think or what somebody said? If it's in the word. If it's in the word that you looking at. Don't you accept no blame for something that's in the word. When you see it's in the word, it's a strategy that the devil used that you fell into. Oh, that's real. I, I, that's too real for some of you. That's too real for some of you to hear. Even though how, how anointed you are, you got to be careful that you don't fall into something. Hello? I don't care what your title is. You still got to be praying up and watching that you don't fall into something. Whoa, that's a word. This who, who does she blame? Because what? Because Hagar was hating her. Hagar didn't like her no more. Hagar didn't love her no more. Hagar was hating on her and she blamed it because of Abraham. So, no, but wait a minute. That strategy works, don't it? I'll never get delivered because why? Because I'm, I, I got my problem. I, I got my issues in the wrong place. Guys, watch. I'm going to show you how he... he uh, we're going to go only by the word only, okay? Is that okay? Yes. The word only. Is that okay? Is that okay? Back there. Chris, you got me. Because this but no, it's about to be heavy. Because it's getting heavier by the minute. Yes, Are we reading the Bible? Yes. Are we reading the word of God? Yes. Are we reading the word of God? Yes. So it's not somebody trying to throw off anything. Because I would have to have written it in the word of God to throw off. Hello, is that right? We ain't taking one scripture out of context, rereading the whole story. Is that right? Ooh. Who didn't know that was in the Bible? All oh, y'all knew. Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me see all these lying people. How many people knew that what we talk about was in the Bible? Oh, okay. All right. Now, how many didn't know it was in there? If it's in there, it didn't just happen today. Thousands of years ago, the devil was still using that same strategy. These are not enemies of God. These are God's chosen people. These are no heathens. These were God's chosen people that this he was working with. Oh. Oh. 
the one that was called by his name. <laughs> and those who had a promise had a covenant with God. Those people he was working with. And then had the nerve to say, go ahead. May the Lord do what? May the Lord be the judge between you and me. God going to get you. Uh-huh. God going to get you. Let God teach you. For you doing me this way. God going to teach you. God going to get you. But let God judge who's right between me and you. God ain't going to let you get away with these days. Hey, she had the nerve to bring the Lord whose promise she let go of and forgot about and then begin to make an accusation against. Now she wants to be spiritual and bring up God. Yes, she did. Here it is. Read. Mike. What? Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarah dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. There it is. No, she didn't handle that. Cheryl first had to deal with her issues. She wanted to take out on her, her maid. See, Abraham said, well, hey, that's your slave. Do what you want to do with her. But Abraham forgot he married her. Ah, he said, Abram, she, Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham to be his wife. Did you not read that? Can I tell you something? I want to mess y'all up. To the other woman syndrome. Here is the picture of the home versus the other woman. When it came to, if I'm going to mess up my home to leave with you, uh uh, you got to go. I ain't leaving where I'm at. I shouldn't have been here. I was wrong to be here, but don't get it twisted. I've been with this person this long because I ain't leaving that person. No, they didn't think they. Because some of y'all been the other woman. Up in here, up in here. And the question that I asked, did they leave? I heard my mama say, she said, she was teaching somebody, young women, she said, I wish I'd be a, I would be a fool to give up all that I worked with and work for when you didn't have something and now then you moved into you got something and I'm just going to let her because my pride and give another woman, give it away to another woman because I got my feelings hurt. Oh no, we can work through that one. <laughs> my mama said that. And struggle with you all this time, and now you on top, and you not. Mm -mm. She said, "Hold oh, no. on." And I sat there and I listened to that, and it said, "This is what Hagar." See, well now Sarai now have that person under her now instead of showing love because all she did is what she was instructed to do as a slave and now you now going to punish her as your enemy because why? Because your plan backfired because your plan and your plan B and your compromise didn't work out how the devil, devil told you it was going to be. He planted that fantasy that it was going to be so much better once you did that and then when you get the double shanta and then she went ah ah 
She had a problem. She couldn't face her problems. What was she? She didn't want to be accountable to what she did, what she chose, what she let the devil mess with her mind and make her forgive up trusting the word of promise. And now, now she got her plan in flesh, and now she can't deal with it. First, she jumped on the man and blamed him. Now the slave, she was harsh with her for obeying her. She didn't even treat her right. Because why? Because I'm having a problem with myself and I'm going to take it out on anybody I can. See, one thing you got to understand, when the devil gives you a problem with yourself, he's going to point it in some direction. And he's going to paint to me. He's going to point your frustration on towards somebody. And you're going to take it out on somebody and you cannot deal with somebody. And that's you still not dealing with the problems within your own self. And because why? You are now saying you justifying your plans, your plan B and your plan C. And now you're going to go through the alphabet, end up doing the alphabets just like you used to do before you were saved. Going through the alphabets or the alphabets went through you. And so now here you are now with a plan B. Now you're working on plan C and you're playing on plan D. And you don't see you're getting yourself deeper and deeper. Because why? Until you can face you. And stop pointing your threat towards someone. You will never have no peace. Watch, it's going to slap you. Come on. Just when I thought it was safe to go back into the waters, here come Jaws. Watch. Now, the angel now what happened? Of the Lord. And what happened? No, she, Sarah dealt hard with her, with her and she did what? Ran, read, amplify that, that, that last one. But Abram said to Sarai, uh -huh. see here, your man is in your hands and power. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And when Sarai dealt severely with her, watch the word, humbling and afflicting her, uh. she, Hagar, fled from her. Now, look what happened. Remember, I told you there's oppressors, and there's our what? Fleers, those who always running. The devil always wants you to start running from everything. What did Hagar do? She fled. She's a fleer. She ran. Cause she said, uh, uh and here's what she, you can hear her saying, uh, uh, and she ain't going to talk to me like that. She ain't going to be doing me like, I don't have to sit here and let people treat me like this. I'm getting up out of here. I'm done. I'm see you. She began to flee uh, because the treatment she was getting, <laughs> because the treatment she was getting, she said, I ain't taking no more. I ain't no pressure. I ain't no fighter. I'm a fleer. <laughs> Oh, anymore? I'll just, I'll just say that over here. Speak that word. <laughs> Is anybody seeing anything here? Is that something new? So that's another old strategy that the devil has been using all this time. I'm trying to tell you. The Lord took me through something. Because look at the word. And listen what it say. Oh, don't get watch this. Let me tap my foot. Read. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness. By the spring on the way to Shur. No. She running, but God had to go find her. See, if God don't go after you while you running, because let me show you the characteristic of this run. Read the next verse, what it say. Mike? She said, No. And he said, He said, Hagar, Sarah's maid. Uh. Where you coming from? Where you running from? What got you running? Why you running? 
But when you notice, that's the same thing God asked Adam. Where are you? <laughs> he found him out of the wheel. He found him messed up. Found him, he said, hey, 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 hey. Where are you? You notice he knew who she was. He told her, the maid of Sarah. <laughs> hey, I know your name and I know where you come from. But I'm asking you, do you where are you coming from? Oh, this is going to bless you. Come on. Read. And where are you going? That's the question right there. We're so busy running from stuff, we don't see where we're headed. What am I running to? What am I running myself back into? That it's got me just running. As long as I just get away from there and you don't get it. Why would he tell you just to get away from there? Because that's where your safety is. That's where your covering is. And the devil can get you to run from your cover. He don't care where he got you running. You notice he didn't run you to someplace. His number one goal was to get you to run from where you were supposed to be. Did you hear me? I said, where are you going? Look at somebody next to you. Ask yourself, where are you going? And if you don't know where you're going, then guess what? God didn't tell you to leave. God never leaves in a random abandonment. No. Why did he ask you that? Here's your word. Let's see. If the word don't say it, don't listen to it. And watch. And he said, she said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarah. Amplified the last two verses. But the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness of the road to Shur. And he said, Uh-huh. And where are you intending to go? Did you do you have a plan? <coughs> do you have a promise that's telling you this? Do you have a directive? All right, come on, read. And she said, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarah. Everybody better underline running from. Running from. You notice something. It's about to get personal. Can can we go here again? You know, it wasn't telling you to run from a place. You wasn't running from a position. The devil had you running from a person. So as long as the devil focus had you focus on that person, he can get you to run in any other direction he won't. He can get you to do what he wants you to do as long as he have you focus on that one person. (laughs) I said it wasn't going to hurt long. Read it again. She said, and he said, she said, and she said, I'm running away from my mistress, Sarah. Uh, I'm running from her, that person. I can't stand. I just can't, I know, I just don't want nothing to do with them. I don't want to talk to them again. They never want to speak to them again. I just want to get away from them. I got to get away from. But let's see what the words say. Come on. The angel of the Lord. What did he say, Mike? Said to her. What? Return. What? What? Return what? To your uh-huh. And submit yourself. Oh, it didn't say that. Oh, here is the word of great word of trust. 
No, before you even get to submit, you had to go back. Oh, that's where they, that's where they, that's what got me there. I said, oh. <laughs> you got to go back. Why? Because I never told you to leave in the first place. The devil, because it's a trap from the devil that have you, because you don't even know where you're going. If I hadn't stopped you in this wilderness, you wouldn't even made it across, because you had run out of water, and the baby didn't even have nothing for its own self. I saved your life by having you go back from whether you let the devil made you run from. You never heard anything that the word of the Lord told Hagar to flee. The fleer in her couldn't deal with the press. The pressure was putting too much pressure. So I am going to do what I do best. Run. I never get stronger. I never get better. I will just always keep finding reasons to keep running. I don't know. I don't know if somebody, this, this is a good word. God speaking here today. So. <laughs> I can't tell you. It's going to slap you in the head when you hear it. Go back. Return back. To what you thought. You were running from. And you sitting there like, oh, no, God, I know that ain't you saying that. Because, you know, it took my strength and my might and power just to get away. Oh, God, uh-uh, uh-uh, that kept me praying. That was just hell. I was not even there. And you telling me, to, to Lord, I know, but, Lord, you got to talk to me again. <laughs> You'd be surprised, God. Go back to that. You no, no. You better hear me. See, that's one thing you hear the voice. But when he's showing you in the word, as he's talking to you, then he's saying, now what does this say? Now, I ain't just telling you to do something just because to tell you to do it. I'm just trying to keep you from the trap in the plan. Why the devil? Hello, this is Pastor David Gurley. I'm here to talk to my brothers and sisters. If you've been following our show for the past year and a half that we've been on and you've been blessed by our show. God has told me that he called it for 1,000 covenant partners. If you think that God is talking to you about sowing into the ministry, we'd be glad to have you. We'd be glad to pray with you and to cover you in prayer that you show it to whatever this team work that we're doing here. So pray about it and ask God one in them 1,000 covenant partners that God is calling for. Won't you to run? Because why? <laughs> Hagar, all you did is what you were told. <laughs> I'm not mad at you, Hagar. All you did, but let me deal with my people. See, you better off with the situation when I deal with my people than having you deal with the devil's people. Yes. That's good. All right now. All right now. Oh, it'll be. But look. Did you say he said do what? Go ahead. Go read that. Oh, that's a problem. Because God said your pride is what's making you run. <laughs> he said, can you humble yourself? Can you humble yourself? Miss, I think I deserve better and all this and that. But you didn't even know where you were going. You didn't even know what the devil had waiting on you. You sitting there with a plan and a dream from God and then entertaining the things of the devil. So you was already deluded. You was already half defeated already. 
It ain't take it. It ain't gonna take no time for the devil to get you under his control. Because you have to feed it now, and now you just disconnected from your help. Go submit to show me that you got the, your pride. And I promise you, if you submit, because <laughs> you're not submitting to her, you're submitting to me. So what does Hagar have to now make a choice? She got to trust God over what she dealing with. She had to trust God in the time of adversity, in the time when it, everything's contrary. That's the second level of trust. When things are not like I want them to be and things are like everything's wrong and I might be mistreated, misunderstood. And I'm like, wait a minute, God, I left because I was treated wrong. I had a good reason for leaving. Go. Go. I can't hear you. Go and submit. But he didn't say she's now she got to trust. Because I got to trust God over everything I feel and think and every inkling in my body. Because I had to trust God with all. Oh. Because until my heart was all in, I wasn't moving. Or I was moving slow. And that's why some of you obeying God slowly because your heart still ain't in yet. All your heart ain't in. It's still part of you with an argument. It's still part of you want to hold on to what the trap that the devil set to the lie that the devil told or the, the having you sitting here. What? Frustrated. Come on now. But you did. But God said you got to begin to take a promise and begin to put it on the doubt in you and say, Lord, I trust you with all my. I, I, I. And I know you know what's best for me because you already in my future. And I don't even know what tomorrow's going to hold. So God, I'm putting my faith and trust in you knowing that what? You can not fail me. I got to have confidence in who you are. See, that's why we can't trust him because we don't know who he is. But you got to begin to say, Lord, I know who you are. And I know you cannot lie based on your word. You have never failed, God. You have never let me down, God. You have always made a way, God. So why all of a sudden now will I get to a place that I won't trust you to do what you're telling me to do? Even though I don't want to, God, <laughs> yet will I trust you. <laughs> yet you slay me, God. And everything's contrary to that. Lord, you don't understand. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to run <laughs> to get away from some of them crazy people. But God said, can you trust me in the face of the crazy people? Can I be glorified in the midst of the people who pressing you? <laughs> can I show you that I'm for you? Because when I say to trust, means to have confidence that I will be secure. I will be secure. It's going to be all right. But how God going to show me when I'm away from where he want me? Don't you know God knew? Let me show you why some of you people who always wanting to move and run and leave and all this stuff. Let me show you something. Read what it say. Mike. What did it say? What? I will do what? Uh-huh. I will what? Uh-huh. 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 You didn't get it. God said there was a blessing. Your destiny was going to be revealed in the place where you didn't want to be at. Uh -huh. And if you had left and the devil knew if he can get you away from where I ordained you to be, you will never fulfill your destiny. Uh -huh. And he said, oh, go, go back there. Uh -huh. And I'm going to bless you in the midst of the place where the devil thought he messed you up. Uh -huh. You already said I will multiply you. Uh -huh. But I'm not going to multiply you in the wilderness. Not where you trying to go. He said, but I will multiply you. There was a reason for me to tell you to go back. Because that's where I had you. 
That's where your destiny was. See, that's why the devil just wants you fleeing, not understanding what I'm leaving. I had to see the wrong. You know, this the angel never addressed the wrong. Stop. He wouldn't even listen to Hagar talk about how wrong she was treated. Did you get that tap toe? Tap toe. Told you. He didn't. He never talked to her about how bad she was treated. He talked to her about her purpose and destiny. Your destiny is greater than how you treat it. Because the word of God, also the second witness, he said, anyone who lived godly will suffer. So your purpose was greater than the treatment. Uh, oh my God. Because you want things to be fair. You wanted things to be right. <laughs> and the devil was telling you, that ain't right. That ain't fair. Uh, say it ain't worked. Did the angel of the Lord talk to her about her treatment? No. He even told her to go back and submit. He said, sometimes some of you have been spoiled or messed up all our life. And sometimes God got to make us through something that we go through. Because some of you would have never grown if God hadn't had somebody pushing you. Somebody bothering you. You wouldn't have been praying unless somebody was. Huh? God had to give some of you patience because he had somebody was on your. Ah, you didn't know you were strong as you are. Because always when somebody bothers you, you always gave in and got upset and got attitude like this. But now you taking something that you in the past wouldn't have never took. So that means you're getting stronger than you ever been. But God said, oh, I begin to tell you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for my haters because my haters made me grow. I grew up in hater, sipping on haterade. But if I run, I stay weak. And if I flee, I stay like I've always been. Just going to run to it another location until somebody chase me from there. But you notice God put a stop to her running. He put a stop to her fleeing and told her to go. I know he's talking. I'm telling you. Because I, I'm telling you, he took me. I said, no, I, don't, I know that ain't God telling me that. Mm -mm. No, Lord. You can use 12 people to go do that, God. He said, uh-uh. <laughs> you the man. <laughs> now, how can you argue with the voice of God, the spirit of God, the conviction of God, and then you look at the word of God. <laughs> and all I can do is scratch my head. I'm not kidding you. Don't, I'm being for real. That's something to face. When you're facing this in the word and this facing you. Now we shouldn't here listening to this. Some of you now are where I was. You got to face this now. Prophet, can, can we run away from this? Is it in the word? See, what is God doing? He's opening our eyes. Because we didn't want to see it. We didn't know it was there, but we didn't want to see it in case we ran across it. <laughs> 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 
because we still wanted to keep running on in that place and we don't know where we're going in that wilderness experience. We're playing C, B, D, E, F, and G. Now, if God was telling you to flee, he wouldn't have you on plan C. He wouldn't have you on the plan G. H, I, and J. So what, the only way he can get me keep going now, the only way the devil can keep me going, he now had to revert my mind back to how it used to be, who had to be pulled by the attention of plan B, C, D, and E. Not noticing what it's costing me and how far I'm getting away from where I need to be, a place called my destiny. Church is quiet. Where the signs at? <laughs> Come on now. Ouch. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so what did he do? In the midst of her plan, he had to give her, make her have about what? A choice. Remember I told you what brought me here. The, he's going to make you have a choice in the midst of your plan. And it ain't the point of time when plan was bad. No, ask yourself. It, it, really, is it, did you, anybody, anybody come here for help tonight? Yes. Was there a word of help here? Yes. Come, come on, come on, come on. It's being honest time now. Because did you know that's God loving you so much? No, seriously. It's not God mad at you. Don't let no religious people try to tell you that. It was that the fact God loved you so much, he started now helping you at the, in the midst of your plan, in the midst of your mess, in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your failure. He said, with love and kindness of a what? He, remember, she wasn't looking for God. He came after her. He sent someone after her. And he didn't find her in a good place. And she hadn't even gave birth to her baby yet. She still was pregnant running. Because why? She was pregnant with a problem. Because she gave birth to the problem. And, 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 and she. And you didn't get it. You didn't get it. No, and, and then, then, then he said, what? Submit thyself to her and I will. And, and, and exceedingly, and it shall be a number multitude for the number. And verse 11, Mike. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Uh huh. Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael. She, she didn't even know the name of her baby. <laughs> she just gave, I don't even know she just had a baby, a problem. Here's some of you people don't even know the purpose of what you're giving birth to. Because if God did not ordain it, you the, the devil got a purpose for that birth. Yes. Nah. Wow. Uh, so God said, excuse me. You gave birth to a promise. I gave you a promise, but you couldn't wait on me. So now you're giving birth to a problem. You're giving birth to fleshly plan B. See, she was pregnant now with a plan. She's a product of a plan B. Uh. But wait a minute. Here was a divine what? God knew he gave birth. Before he gave birth to the name, the name Isaac, he gave the name. Now he gave the name Ishmael before he was here. So your problem now is going to have a purpose. Because anything that God puts his name before he'd ever get here, it has a purpose. When you could have had peace, the devil had you to the place that you just had to get. You couldn't wait. Here got my help right here. Continue. Did you hear that? I heard what you're going through. Uh huh. Ooh. Uh huh. Ah. Uh. 
Now you just gave birth to a zip food. <laughs> he ain't had no friends. He gonna be hating and fighting everybody and everybody gonna be hating and fighting him. So there ain't gonna be peace anywhere with this child. He said he's going to be a wild man. Didn't he call him that? <laughs> Which means a person with no, we call today, class. And, and that's who the devil having you trying to hook up with. Somebody with no class. How do I know I'm in trouble? Because I'm hanging out with Ishmael. <laughs> Ouch. But he good at sin, but is he got any class? Does he have any ambiance? Did he know what the word ambiance means? <laughs> he said a wild man. Not too smart, not too bright. But physical, yes he is. And that's what we call, I want me a thug. He don't have, he's not too smart. But he's physical. You see it in the video. See it on TV. You see it all you want. And that's what the devil does. No. I know it's sitting on the front row. I ain't saying no name. That's somewhere on the front, somewhere on the front row. Because when you see the wild man running wild, it refers to the man. Wild names, no learning, no skill, no cool, but physical, barbaric, strong. Some of y'all been dating Ishmael. Hello? I don't know what you've been here. I mean, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord. And the 13th verse says what? And she called the name of the Lord. And? Uh-huh. You are the God who seeks. Uh-huh. For she said, have I, also, have I also here seen him who sees me? Uh-huh. Therefore. Beer in Hira. Behold, is between Kadesh and Bere. Hello? Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name what? Which Hagar bare Ishmael. Ain't that something? Here come Abraham, and later on, who wasn't there when God told. He told Hagar, see, the woman could not name the son. The, the man had to name him. And so what happened? So she couldn't tell him what to name him. But here she know that's the man of God still. But God made you a promise in the wilderness. And when the time came, the man of God had the same word in his mouth. And, and that's what you're hearing. She didn't have to tell Abram what God told her. And that's the mistake we do. We talk too much. Yes. We tell the devil what God is telling us and let the devil begin to give us explanations. If you are supposed to be talking to me, I don't have to tell you nothing. You better tell me the same thing I heard God tell me for myself. And it better line up right here. Because that's the real thing. Y'all still mad at me. So what did she have to learn how to do in her level of trust? In the time her trust was tested in the midst of a struggle. 
in the midst of persecution. In the midst, see, see, she was out of the wheel. She had messed up. She was in her feelings. So she, the word of God was against her. But guess what? She had to trust God enough to get back to where she needed to be. And that's us tonight. Not when you make it back. You might be in your wilderness right now and God is talking to you under a tree. He said, do you trust me enough to now follow my instructions to get you back to where you need to be so I can help fulfill your purpose and destiny? I'm not going to fulfill your purpose and destiny where you're trying to go. Your destiny is where I placed you. And that's a word. How many can you say, okay, you, you didn't see yourself and you didn't see your fleeing and you didn't see your plan B's and your schemes and, and all the things that you've been doing. Can you trust God tonight enough to say, God, even where I'm at now, I'm not back with Abraham yet. I'm not even back no around Sarai right now. I'm in the wilderness, God. But he said she called on the name of the Lord there. She, she had to get to a place. Do I trust him enough to follow his instructions or do I still going to try to do it my way? That's where we're we at tonight. Trusting God also is going to cost you what you want. He going to challenge, because why? Because where you are at that particular time was something that he did not ordain. And so what he's going to do is going to ask you of you. I ain't putting up with that. Really? Huh. I ain't going, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. God, I just barely escaped with my mind. I just barely kept with my shoe. People will try to drive you to drink grape juice. <laughs> but if something you said, something drove you to drink, it wasn't the person because they didn't put the bottle in your hand. It was the bait. It was the what me not dealing with something and I'm running from something. And now I begin because I couldn't deal with that. The devil had to have me have a what compromise place and that compromise place got you let's let's give god's word a hand hello this is pastor dave what did i tell you wasn't that an awesome word that god sent to me now i want you to know i have a highly anointed staff of prayer warriors that's waiting to intercede with you and touch and agree on anything that you might need prayer for Call the number on the screen right there. And we have someone waiting just to touch and agree for the power of God to, from this ministry to be on your situation. You have just heard another dynamic message from Pastor David Gurley a Prayer Healing and Deliverance Ministries International. To hear this message in its entirety, you can call 866-608-3335 or you can go to www.phdministriesint.org. If you would like prayer, you can call 866-608-3335. Prayer Healing and Deliverance Ministries International is a Section 501c3 nonprofit organization. Your gift is tax deductible for the fair amount that exceeds any fair market value of materials you receive from us. Prayer Healing and Deliverance Ministries International believes that your tithes belong to your local church. Your donations to the ministry are received as offerings to support the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The preceding program was sponsored by the friends and covenant partners of Prayer Healing and Deliverance Ministries International.